I've learned two things over the last couple of months on blogging theology that have really surprised me, even shocked me and changed my worldview to some extent. The first one is um, the research that was done by some universities of atheists' beliefs. And apparently the majority of atheists surveyed in Europe and South America and Japan, the majority believe in the supernatural. They believe in life after death, angels, demons and so on. They just don't believe in God, whatever that may mean. So that's the first thing that surprised me because I had thought atheists were materialists who absolutely do not believe any spiritual or otherworldly or afterlife dimension at all. But that is not the case. That, that So that's changed my worldview. When I talk to atheists now, I assume they do believe in many of these things. The second thing that um, frankly shocked me was my discussion this morning with uh, the Reverend Professor Keith Ward, who um, until his retirement was the Regis Professor of Divinity at the University of Oxford, one of the most distinguished uh, Christian theologians in Britain or even in the Western world. And um, the video is now up online. You can watch it for yourself. Um, I asked him, the last question I asked him was, what did he make of the prophethood of Muhammad? And he said, quite honestly, that he believed Muhammad was a prophet. And then he said to me that he also believed the Quran was divine revelation. And I wasn't expecting that, although obviously the two are connected uh, inextricably. Then I, uh, I asked him a supplementary question, and that is, in terms of his colleagues who are Christian theologians, remember Keith Ward is at the uh, the apex. He's one of the elite uh, in the world or Christian theologians. Um, I asked him about his colleagues' beliefs. Did he think, to what extent did they believe that Muhammad was a prophet sent by God? And he said that they were virtually all believing that he was sent by God. Now, this uh, was a total surprise and shock to me. Maybe I should have known, but I've never heard anyone say this before. Um, and this means that the Christian ulama, to uh, use that expression, uh, most of them clearly believe that Muhammad is a prophet of God uh, and have accepted that. Um, the question inevitably arises is why don't they become Muslim officially? Why don't they say the Shahada? And I asked him that question, of course, and you can see his reply, obviously speaking for himself here, about his own personal identity and his own life experience as a Christian. You can see his response to that and make of that what you will. So the, these two answers have been um, revel totally a revelation to me uh, about atheists and uh, that most Christian theologians uh, believe Muhammad is a prophet. I suspect that we would need to qualify that slightly, although Professor Keith Ward didn't. Um, I think probably in um, fundamentalist seminaries in the United States, I'm thinking of the Southern Baptist uh, theological seminary. Um, I don't imagine, well, I could be wrong, um, happy to be proved wrong, uh, that many theologians associated with that institution think Muhammad is a prophet of God. But um, I suppose outside of fundamentalism, uh, mainstream uh, Anglican, Methodist and so on, uh, theologians would presumably therefore do see him as a prophet and I assume uh, accept the Quran as inspired by God as well. This is really, really significant and for many, many reasons. It, it, it uh, will help to build bridges between uh, so-called East and West, between the Islamic world and the, the Western world. Uh, and But also it highlights a, a, another shocking fact for me, and that is the gulf, and we discussed this with Keith Ward, the gulf that exists between Christian theologians, the, the Christian ulama, if you like, and the man in the, and woman in the pew. Uh, um, this huge gulf that exists uh, 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 for many reasons, um, the, the most educated people in the church do believe Muhammad is a prophet and those that are not educated theologically, it seems, do not. Um, so this gulf is quite extraordinary that this should exist and a, a cause of scandal in a way that it should exist. And uh, Keith Ward obviously is not approving of this or defending this. He would like people to be more educated about Islam and the truth about the prophethood of Muhammad and the revelation of the Quran. So I just wanted to just to share that um, extraordinary um, interview with you. Please do watch it. Um, I personally found Keith Ward to be a lovely human being, he's very personable, uh, easy to talk to, 
Uh, he didn't patronize me. Obviously, uh, uh, you know, he, he is a great scholar and I'm not. And uh, I was very humble that he would even appear on the channel. Um, but I think it is an enormous benefit to people uh, who watch Blogging Theology to acquaint themselves with uh, a, a great theologian and by extension, other theologians uh, from his religion as well. Um, these people are not fanatics. Um, they're not extremists. Uh, they don't seek to dominate uh, and, and destroy Islam like um, certain groups of missionaries do uh, who have a certain profile on social media. Now, th these are people who are highly informed and educated about the facts, about Islam, about theology and so on. And they've come to that con considered conclusion. Um, there are actually some verses in the Quran, I believe, which talk about people like this. Um, another extraordinary indication of the Quran's prescience and uh, prophetic insight into these kinds of Christians. Um, so uh, there we are. I just wanted to share that with you. Um, it's worth getting the word out about this, I think, Be uh, not in a triumphalist way, of course, uh, but in a way uh, that can build bridges between communities, between religions, even geopolitically. If uh, if things are quite different, perhaps, than the usual um, fundamentalist rhetoric would have us believe that, in fact, as I've said repeatedly, the educated Christian ulama um, are quite happy to accept that Muhammad, a prophet of Tawheed, monotheism, who accepted Jesus as the Christ, of course. Muslims have to believe that if they're Muslim accepted the virgin birth, accepted that Jesus was sent as a prophet to the Jews, which of course is exactly what he does say in uh, Matthew's Gospel, chapter 15, um, and, and that he is a wonderful human being uh, and, and never to be to protect it, to protect the name of Jesus, the truth about Jesus is something that we can share with Christians uh, in a world that's increasingly hostile to faith uh, and to uh, religious figures, whether it be Muhammad or Jesus or Moses, Peace be upon them all. Until next time.